Hello, I'm Jacob Kruger, and this is the Write Your Screenplay Podcast. This week, we are going to be talking about Shrinking by Brett Goldstein, Bill Lawrence, and Jason Siegel. Um, a lot of the same people who brought us Ted Lasso. And, and if you've watched the show, you know that there's a very familiar feeling to the show. Um, I was actually recently talking about this in my Thursday Night Rights class, that you know there are shows that are therapeutic and there are shows that are anti-therapeutic. Um, and when I say a therapeutic show, w- what I'm really talking about is a show that is built around the healing of the protagonists, right? The healing of the main characters. So if you look at Ted Lasso and if you look at Shrinking, right, these are both shows that are about the healing of the main characters, right? In Ted Lasso, we meet a good man entering a complicated world and we watch him heal all the people around him in season one. And then in season two, we watch him deal with his own healing, right? But it's a therapeutic show. The the character's journey is a therapeutic journey. And in watching a therapeutic journey, what's the value for us as an audience is we get to feel some of that therapeutic journey ourselves. We get to think, huh, maybe I could become a better person. Maybe I could deal with my demons. Maybe I could grow. And an anti-therapeutic show is a show that breaks the characters, right? That takes a well-adjusted character and breaks them or takes a maladjusted character and breaks them worse. So for example, Succession is an anti-therapeutic show, right? It, it is a show that that where the characters do not transcend, where rather the characters are swallowed by their experience. Um, but believe it or not, an anti-therapeutic show actually has the same effect on an audience as a therapeutic show. It, it it creates what the Greeks called catharsis, right? This feeling of I'm not alone in the world, right? This feeling of a lessening of our own pain by recognizing that other people have gone through similar or related pains to the ones that we've gone through. So most shows, most movies are therapeutic for the audience. And some shows are also therapeutic for the characters and some are anti-therapeutic and some are a mixture of the two, right? So if we think of a, a film, for example, like Black Swan, Black Swan is both therapeutic in that we have a character who has a repressed dark side and she takes the therapeutic action of integrating the dark side, right? She can only dance the white swan. She learns to dance the black swan. But it's also anti-therapeutic in that the black swan in her ends up basically eating her, right? And so she reaches this moment that's like all Aronofsky movies, a transcendent suicide, where she both kills herself and says the word perfect. And she's had both a therapeutic and an anti-therapeutic journey at the same time. And the audience finds catharsis. And Shrinking, of course, is literally a therapeutic show in that the characters are therapists. At least three of the characters are. Harrison Ford's character is a therapist. Paul, Jason Siegel's character, Jimmy, is a therapist. And Jessica Williams' character, Gabby, is a therapist. We're really focused around three therapists. Um, We're Jimmy's daughter, Alice, um, and some patients, right? And that is really the cast of this show. And writing a therapeutic show is hard. In some ways, writing a therapeutic show is harder than writing an anti-therapeutic one. So if you have listened to my podcast on Ted Lasso, for example, the challenge of writing a therapeutic show is that as people get better, how do you keep the conflict going, right? How do you keep the pressure growing? So if, if you think about Ted Lasso, you know, we start with these really beautiful beautifully messed up characters, the woman who wants to destroy her own team just to get back at her husband. And we watch what happens when one person with different values comes in. But as they start to change, it actually becomes harder to sustain the show, right? Because the original engine starts to change. Um, Whereas messing up your characters only creates more and more and more drama. So it's a challenge to write a therapeutic show, right? Because as our characters heal, there's less drama, just like in our own lives, right? As we heal, there is less drama. But writing a show about therapists is about as hard of a task as 
you can take on as a screenwriter. Therapy scenes are uniquely difficult. And the reason that they're uniquely difficult is that the wants tend to drop out, right? If your therapist is a good therapist, right, if they actually do what a therapist is supposed to do, um, their job is to go, my needs do not matter in this scene. Only the client's needs matter. And my goal is to help, to understand, to listen. And the client's goal is to share, get better, right? And therefore, there is no easily built conflict. And that, that and to make matters worse, what do therapists do mostly is they ask questions and they sound things back, right? The less of the therapist they are putting into, the less of them that they're putting into the scene, the better your therapy is going to work, right? So uh, a good therapist is going to ask you a lot of questions, going to say back the things, what they're hearing and what you said. And that is like the antithesis of drama, which is why these therapy scenes are so darn hard to write. And it's uh, one of the reasons why it's so beautiful to watch a show like Shrinking and see what they did with it. The simple answer that you'll see in most shows and most movies that have therapists in them is to let your therapist, let them not be very good therapists, right? Because that's going to keep your main character messed up and it's going to keep your therapy scenes active. Um, and, and there's some degree that, that that's what shrinking does, right? There's some degree that, um, you know, so, so at the center of shrinking is uh, Jason Siegel's character, right? And this is a man who was madly in love with his wife, and um, there are going to be a couple spoilers ahead, but nothing that you won't quickly realize if you're watching the show. His wife has died when we meet him in the pilot episode. And he is messing up. He is messing up at every level because he is not able to deal with his wife's death. Um, so when we meet him at the beginning... He is using a tremendous number of drugs. He is completely failing in raising his daughter. He's basically just given up on that and he's letting her deal with all this stuff alone. And he's, he's using sex workers um, to try to deal with his pain, right? And he is not okay. So we meet this guy who's not okay. And then it's a pleasant surprise or shock when we realize that he's actually a therapist, right? We think he, if not anything, he's the guy who really needs therapy. No, he's a therapist. Um, but then they make a choice, right? It, he can't just be a normal therapist with a bunch of personal problems. He has to make a choice that is different, right? That's part of the hook. And it's part of also the people who don't like shrinking or, or who have concerns about shrinking go, whoa, whoa, whoa. Is this how we want to portray therapy, right? Is this, is this something that actually should be celebrated? And even inside of the show, right? Harrison Ford's character, Paul, is constantly going like, what you're doing is completely wrong therapeutically. But Jason Siegel's character, Jimmy's idea is, what if I just start getting real with my patients? Um, what if I get rid of all these lines of what the proper behavior is supposed to be? And so what does this do? This creates really amazing drama, right? So we have a simple hook of a therapist, right? Who is messing up in his own life, but who's also making choices that are not traditional therapist choices. He's crossing the the lines of what you're supposed to do as a therapist. And, and one of the things, so he's crossing the ethical lines of what you're supposed to do as a therapist. And one of the really interesting things about how the show works is that it doesn't judge him. Harrison Ford judges him. Paul judges him. Um, but the show does not. And the show ends up exploring both the beautiful and the terrible things that go along with those choices. So, for example, he tells one of his his clients who has been 
forever having the same conversation about this horrible, abusive relationship she's in. She tells her she has to leave the guy. And there's a whole journey. I'm not going to do any spoilers there, but she goes on a whole journey that shows the beauty and the failure and the horror and the, and the danger and all the different permutations of what does it mean when a therapist crosses that ethical line and what makes that tempting and what makes that problematic, right? And the show actually ends up doing a really interesting job at, at looking at that. Uh, Similarly, another character, Sean, played by Luke Tenney, has a problem with anger, right? And uh, Jimmy takes some really radical, non-necessarily ethical, non-therapeutic approaches to helping him deal with the anger and then finds out he doesn't have a place to live and he basically takes him in as a tenant. And Paul, Harrison Ford's character, spends a lot of time saying to Jason Siegel's character, Jimmy, like, hey, dude, like, that's not right. That is totally wrong what you're doing. Um, and not only has he brought this troubled character in, but he's brought this troubled character into his daughter's life. But again, this is a therapeutic show. So yes, we do get into some of the complications of that, right? But we mostly, it becomes a healing journey, right? Ironic choices that lead to healing ethical and unethical choices that lead to healing, the mistakes that we make that lead to healing. And in, in this way, it might not be a great show about how to be a therapist, but it's quite a beautiful show about the irony and the complications of human foibles. There are going to be some spoilers now. So, you know, for example, Harrison Ford, Paul, who is Jimmy's mentor, almost like a father figure to him and constantly is disapproving of Jimmy, particularly for crossing ethical lines. But by episode nine, <laughs> Paul is sleeping with his own doctor. Jessica Williams' character, Gabby, she has become Jimmy's lover. Right? She calls him safe dick, right? Meaning they're not going to have a relationship. There's not an emotional involvement. Right, But that's complicated because she has a relationship with his daughter and that's hard, right? And so it's a show ultimately about the complications of being human and how imperfect, complicated relationships can nevertheless lead to healing. It's a show about acceptance and self-acceptance, right? At the center of the show is a guy who is constantly messing up as a father, right? even as he does better, he is constantly messing up as a father. But even through his mess ups, what we're actually watching is we're watching him heal his relationship with his daughter. We're watching him earn her trust back. We are watching him try and fail and make mistakes. And we are watching a therapeutic journey with a bunch of complicated therapists. So this is something to think about in your own writing, right? It's important to remember your show can be therapeutic, your show can be anti-therapeutic, your show can be therapeutic and anti-therapeutic. It can be any mix in between, but it's interesting to think about what do you want to show, right? What aspects of human nature do you want to show and what kind of trajectory do you want to show in your characters? I hope that you enjoyed part one of this podcast. If you did, make sure to come back for part two. We're going to be doing a deep analysis of one of the pivotal scenes of uh, the first season of Shrinking. And um, by looking at it deeply, we're going to kind of pivot from doing this kind of deep emotional work to looking about what we can learn from the craft of Shrinking. Um, I'm going to be teaching you a technique for dealing with cliche in your screenwriting, what to do when cliches come up and how to transform them into something that feels new and fresh again. We're going to be talking about the difference between homage and plagiarism. And finally, I'm going to be giving you five incredibly helpful techniques that you can call from shrinking in order to make your dialogue really sizzle on the page. So come check it out. We're going to be getting deep into craft. And in the meantime, come study with me. 
We do a free class every Thursday night called Thursday Night Writes. It's awesome. We get about 100 people from all over the world, writers like you. Come check it out. We also have foundation classes, master classes, our ProTrack mentorship program that pairs you one-on-one with a professional writer and a whole host of other programs designed to help you get where you want to go as a screenwriter. Um, If you want to learn more, writeyourscreenplay.com.